that God bless you this morning and praise God and good morning to each and every last one of you. And thank you once again for tuning on to me once again, as always. Praise God. It's been a pleasure to read and pray for you all and, you know, and share my testimony and share a little bit of things that's been going on with me in my little life. Praise God. On my job, whatever it is, I'm just happy to share with you all. Praise God. I want to read out here uh, out of 1 Corinthians chapter 4, you know, talking about Paul's I mean, relationship with the Christian. Paul's relationship with the Corinthians. That's what I'm going to read here about. Then I'm share with you as always on my other book. I'm going to first start with uh, chapter 4. It says, So look at Apollos and me are a mere servant of Christ who, who, who have been put in charge of explaining God's misery. Now a person who is put in charge as a manager must be faithful. As for me, it's matter very little how I might be evaluated by you or by any human authority. I don't even trust my own judgment on this point. My conscience is clear, but that doesn't prove I'm right. It is the Lord himself who will examine me and decide. So don't make judgment about anyone ahead of time before the Lord's return, for he will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motive. Then God will give to each other one whatever praise is due. That's also in the book of Romans chapter 2 verse 1 through 21. That's why I would say within the light, within the dark I mean, will always come in the light. And it says here in the book, praise God. I just read it. And uh, verse 6 says, Dear brothers and sisters, I have used Apollos and myself to illustrate what I've been saying. If you pay attention to what I have quote from the scriptures, you won't be proud of one of your leaders at the expense of another. For what gives you the right to make such a judgment? What do you have? He says, what do you have? that God hasn't given you. And if anything, he says, and if everything you have is from God, why boost, uh, he says, why boost as though it were not a gift? You think you already have everything you need? You think you already rich? You have begun to reign in God's kingdom without us? I wish you really were reign already. Well, then we would but then we would be reigning with you. Instead, I sometimes think God has put us apostles on displays like prisoners for war at the end of a victory parade, condemned to life, I mean, to, condemned to die. We have become a spectacular to the entire world, to peoples and angels alike. Verse 10 says, our dedication to Christ make us look like fools, but you, cl but you claim to be so wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are so powerful. You are honored by, it says, you are honor, you are honor, but we are radical, I mean, radical. It says, even now we go hungry, go thirsty, and we don't have enough clothes to keep. You know, no clothes to keep us warm. We are often beaten and have no home. We work early with our own hands to earn our living. We bless those who curse us. We are patient with those who abuse us. We appear gently uh, whenever things are said about us. Yet we are treated like the world garbage, like everybody trash, right us, you know, right up to the present moment. That's also the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 18. Verse 14 says, I am not writing these things to shame you, but to warn you as my beloved children. For even if you had 10,000 others to teach you about Christ, you have only one spiritual father. For I became your father in Christ Jesus when I preached the good news to you. So I urge you to Emanate, emanate me. That way, it says, that's why I have sent Timothy, my beloved 
and faithful child in the Lord, he will remain. He said, I mean, he says, it says he will remind you of how I follow Christ Jesus, just as I teach in all the churches wherever I go. That's also in the book of First Corinthians, chapter seven, verse seventeen. Verse eighteen says, "Some of you have become arrogant, thinking I will not visit you again." But I will come, and soon, if the Lord, it says, as soon, as soon if the Lord let me, and then I'll find out whether these arrogant people just give pretentious, pretentious speeches, or whether they will really have God's power. For the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk; it is living by the power. Which do you choose? Should I come with a rod to punish you, or should I come with love and a gentle spirit? And that's also in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 13. You know, I always say, if you're not keeping the real, God already knows who's keeping the real, who's not keeping the real. It's like what you're going to church for. You know, you're going for just a excitement, or you're just going for to show off your clothes, your hair, or how you look, or who you with. You know, I mean, like, are you keeping the real within Him? You know, you're going for the, the righteous of Christ Jesus who woke you up this morning, who saved you, who died on that cross for your sin. Or you out to just to please people, you know, and to show off with the world, you know, what they what you have or whatever. Are you keeping it real with Christ Jesus? Are you giving them the praise and the glory for what he what he had uh what he done for you in your life? You know, how he brought you out, you know, what you've been through, you know, how you didn't know you can you know, how you know didn't know you was gonna make it. You know, you know how you gonna pay your bills. You know how you gonna uh, make it on that. You know, last gas even get to church or wherever. You know, to work whatever. You know how it's how it, how it's gonna happen. But God made a way for it to happen. You know, it's like you need to give God, God all the praise and glory all the time. While to keep Him first and to acknowledge Him in all that you do. You can't do nothing without Him. You know, whether for the grace of God, you wouldn't be up this morning or today watching me on YouTube. If it wasn't for the grace of God, he woke you up this morning, praise God. And anyway, I want to share with you all. So it talks about, you know, spiritual of unforgiveness. You know, some people, they can be in spirit, but you know, they can still have this unforgiveness in them. You know, and God, you know, you want God to forgive you of your sin, whatever wrong you done. You know, why you can't forgive somebody for what they've done wrong to you? You're supposed to forgive. I mean, it didn't say you have to stay with them. You have to be with them. It say you forgive them, you know, for whatever hurt or whatever pain they cause you. But anyway, I'm just going to give you some scriptures. I'm just going to read it, you know, basically talk about spiritual forgiveness in different books of the Bible that you can read God's word and what he said. It, uh, it says, uh, in Psalms 37 verse 5, it says, Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him. He he said, He shall bring it to pass. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says, Bless all the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12 through 15 says, And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if we, it says, if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye, talking about you, but if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's why I say he want him to forgive you. How you expect him you? He going to forgive you anyhow, but you know, how you, uh, you know, the same way you want him to forgive you, the same way he wants you to forgive others. You know, whatever trespass, whatever they've done in their life, whatever they uh, cause you, whatever pain they cause you, forgive them. Um, sometimes people get stuff so wrong. They say, I will, I forgive you. Okay, if you forgive them, why you keep on bringing the same stuff up over and over and over? You know, whether it's to them or somebody else. Basically, that's not forgiving. You know, you're not forgiving them. You're still holding that in, talking about it. You know, leave it alone. You forgive or leave it alone. You know, let bygone be bygone. Move on. 
you know, let, let that go behind, pass, let that be behind, you know, keep on going for it. While I say you can't move on and see what God has for you in front of you when you won't even forgive the one, you know, such as you keep bringing up old stuff. You bringing up stuff that you said you forgive that person that caused you pain, whatever, wrong they done, you know. It's like you said you forgive them, so forgive, forgive them. Leave it alone. Stop talking about it. You know, you ain't forgave them. You keep on talking about it, bringing up, you know, old stuff, whatever, the past. You know, it's not forgiving a person. You still hold on to it. You let it go. Praise God. Uh, Luke chapter 6, uh, verse 37 said, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Luke 23, Luke chapter 23, verse 34 said, Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cost lot. First Corinthians chapter thirteen. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter thirteen verse four says, Charity suffered long. It is kind. Charity uh invited not. Charity vaulted not itself. Is not puffed up. Second Corinthians chapter two verse ten and eleven says, To whom Ye forgive anything. I forgive also, for if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for well, your sake forgave I it in the person of Christ. Least Satan should get a least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his device. Second Corinthians chapter ten verse five says, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into capacity, captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Ephesians chapter uh, Ephesians chapter four verse twenty five to twenty seven and verse thirty two says, Wherefore put in away, lie and speak, every man trust with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God for you to die for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Philippians chapter four verse eight Verse 12 and 13 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virus and if there be any praise, think on these things. I know both how to abase and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14 says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a query against any, even as Christ forgave you, so alone as it's for also do you. And above all things, it says, above all these things, put a charity which is a bound of perfectness. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 30 says, For we know him that have said, Vengeance belongs unto me. I will, I will compense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom that him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and the bread is not and it shall be given him in this next uh, verse the book talks about you know James chapter 3 verse 14 verse 16 through 18 says but if ye have bitter divine and strife in your heart Glory not, and lie not against the truth. For where evian, evian and strife is, there is confusion. 
and every and every evil works, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit, without particularity and without hypocrisy. And the fruits of righteousness is sown is sown in peace of them that make peace. James chapter five verse sixteen says, Confess your fault one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Praise God. That's why I would say, you know, the two agree when you pray about healing, whatever it is. It's like, it's like what two agree. It's like it's one is better than two. You know, it's like one to chase a thousand, two ch chase ten thousand. You know, it's like more. It's like more prayer, more power. You know, but you know, hey, sometimes you can be like, well, I'm praying and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. You know, but you know, it's always, you know, good when somebody agree with you. And that's why I sound like somebody come in my life and don't agree with me. Because you're not on God's side. You're not on my side because I have to be on God's side. You know, I got to come with the agreement with God. And it's like, you ain't with me. You know, I mean, you don't need to be, you know, you can't be for me if you're not with me. You know, pray God. So anyway, God bless you all. And God keep you in our faith. I just, you know, y'all understand and read and take the heed and take that action of what I just read and read for yourself. Praise God for those that know how to read, you know, read for yourself. And if you can't say, hey, I'm here, you know, I mean, I'm reading it to you. Praise God. And it's about doing, doing the will of God for the life. Just obey, you know. If you love him, you keep his commandments. But that mean back, that mean obey, you know, forgive another. Even you can be so mad or whatever, angry or whatever, you know, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. You know, letting that, your know, anger take control of you and getting mad, letting it overpower you still, you overpower it. That's what I was talking about yesterday about don't let the trouble trouble you, trouble it. Don't let the trouble run you down, trouble, you know, letting, you know, run that trouble down. Like it ain't going to affect you and you ain't going to let it happen to you. Not today or no day. You just call up things to be not though they were. They say not today. I don't think so. Devil get behind me. I ain't trying to hear that. You know, you're talking nonsense. Walk away if you can. Praise God. You know, talk about the word of God. Bring up Jesus in the conversation. You know, one time I was talking to somebody. They were talking about, you know, trying to get with me. And I know good and dog on way. They wasn't even saved and everything. By listening to him. By, you know. And they be like, how you, how you going to tell me? How you going to tell me? I don't, you know. You don't know God and everything, but I listen. I'm listening to how you're talking. You know, that's not God telling you to come on and be like that the way you're talking, and then you don't know how to approach a woman, a real woman at that, you know. And it's like, I be like, I'm not trying to hear that. I got to talk about Jesus. I'm on, I'm on Jesus, you know. I mean, I'm live, I live for Jesus right now. You know, what you saying, you talking nonsense. I'm not going to talk about the word of God. Like, he reached out my Bible. He walked away. The devil flee. You know, he already knows. See, the devil can know about the word of God, but at the same time, he's not living it. You know, he's not walking with Jesus. You know, that's why I said the devil's on this book, too. That's why I say, you know, the devil's in heaven, but he got kicked out of heaven. Because God wasn't having that up in there, up there in this house. You know, you can't just put bad and do all this, this bad, evil stuff, you know, up in heaven. You know, you got to get up out of here with that. You know, he got kicked out of heaven. You know, praise God. You know, a lot of people can play church and everything. Because, like I said, the devil knows the book, too. Just... Right, better than you. Right, better than me. But it's about walking and living and doing the will of God for his, for your own life. You know, it's a big difference. You know, yeah, you can know you can put call off scriptures, read and everything, make things sound good. You know, and when your life not even right yourself, you know, you're all messed up. You know, while I said within the dark coming to light, your life will be all messed up. But you know the book. You're not living the word of God. You're not living. You're not doing what God say do. You know, anybody can quote, and remember, and say what they say, make things sound so good, so make it seem like you so holy and you all. You are, uh, you know, so sanctified and all this, and you don't have no problem in your life. He didn't say trouble wasn't going to happen. He didn't say trouble wasn't going to come. You still can go through some stuff. Even some Christian, even believer, you can still go through stuff. But you know the part, you know, it it, uh, it, uh, it all depends on you what you're going to do. You're going to give up on God or you're going to, you know, uh, let that trouble affect you. And it's going to let it stay there. You're not going to fight back on that trouble about Talking about the word of God, whatever do you need to do by faith, but you gonna stand on the word or you gonna give up? You know, the Bible says it's not about when you uh 
Talk about this about how you finish. Or you gonna go all the way. Or you gonna go all the way to the end. In spite of what's going on. You know, you might get sidetracked and everything. The devil try to sidetrack. It's like, what you gonna do? You gonna stand still? You gonna back up? Or you just gonna keep on going forward? Praise God. But anyway, uh, I was just making a point once again. You know, like, they come at you. Well, they came at me. You don't want to talk to them. You know, going by what it look like going by this and that. And then one guy said, well, I know you work out and all that. I know you work in a gym. I'm like, not necessarily because, you know, because how I'm built, you know, it, it's just natural. You don't look like you got four kids. I mean, all this, you know, speaking outside, fleshy. I mean, put a lesson on my flesh, praise God, and get to know me what's inside of me. Get to know me if I, if I love everybody, if I love people, if I'm, you know, good with folks, do I like to be around people, do I like to pray with folks, do I love the Lord or something like that. You know, then, you know, if we, or would you like to come, you know, you invited to the church I go to or something here in the world or something like that or a revival or something. Would you like to come to a revival or night or a musical or, or something? Put God in the situation. But all this time, I would like to take you out to dinner. I would like to take you to the movie. I'm like, I can take my own self out to dinner. I can take my own self out to a movie. I can take my own self out to a house of the Lord, too. But, like, when you would meet somebody in that same in that same um, level that you're on, which is God level, you know, it could work out, it could, might not work out, it could be a setup from the devil, like I said, the devil know the world of God, the devil know the tricks of the game, the devil know what he's doing, or what he be like trying to do, that's why I got to stay focused with my God, my God, he knows, you know, that's why I say he put it in me, this, this, is, this is the spirit thing, you know, he let me know what is right and what is not right, that's why I always pray, I pray for everybody. I pray for the one that be like trying to get at me. I said, Lord, if, he, if he's the one, let it be. If he's not, then he's not. Show me that he's not. You know, so far, so good. Praise God because I got to put God in my situation because I'm good. You know, I'm straight. You know, with somebody or not, I'm good. I'm straight. You know, I'm going to do what I do. Anyway, I got to keep God first in my business at all times because he's always in my business. So I must keep him in my business. I got to have him ask God, I need you in this situation. I need your help, Lord. You know, I have to talk to the guy, you know, that for him to uh, show me, give me some direction, give, give me some instruction about whoever, you know, whatever it is, don't even matter what it is. You know, you hear people talking about nonsense all the time, nonsense, 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 you know, and I don't participate. I might, you know, I, might, I, can, I can be there, I can be like listening, but at the same time, it's like, I'm not hearing it. You know, I'm here, I hear what you, I hear them, they say, but I'm not hearing it. You know, it's not helping my spirit, not helping me. You know, but not gonna talk about the word of God. So I'm gonna tell them about Jesus. Talk about, but I just bring Jesus up. It's like they'll freeze and pause and look at me like I'm crazy, and they'll walk home. They'll walk away. You know, because I'm not on that level. I'm not trying to hear all that nonsense. But when I'm the the, the, the word that they that what they need to hear with the word of God, they don't want to hear it. So I'm not trying to hear all that nonsense. What they're talking about, all that cussing, just talking stupid and all the time. I mean, like you wasting time. <laughs> Why are you wasting all that energy? You know, when you can be doing something for somebody, go help somebody, you know, go reach out to somebody. Somebody may, somebody may need help. Somebody may need prayer. You know, look at that person, know what they say. You don't know what that person's going to. Come over there, let's go over there and pray for them. You know, we ain't got to trust them. We can just stand right there and pray. We can just be right where we are and reach our hands out to them or someone pray for them. You know, praise God. Hallelujah. That's what I'm, you know, likes to do. Praise God. But anyway, God bless you. God keeps in prayer for each and every last one of you. In spite of what you're going through, I don't know what you're going through. All I know is God is good and God will help you. God will bring you. You may be going through something. You're going through something for a reason, but God will bring you out one way or another if you trust and believe in him. Heavenly Father, pray for those who are watching. God bless you. God keep your prayer. Lord, destroy you. Be with you. God, you will lead you in every area of your life in spite of what you're going through, in spite of what you're facing. I pray, you know, the Lord just help you in every area of your, of your life. You may be down. You may be sad. Something may happen. You know, something may happen. Something may happen. You probably just down on, you might have uh, been in a broken relationship. You might have been a, a bruise of a relationship. I don't know. You may have lost your loved one. You may have lost your best friend. But I want to let you know that God is with you. He cares for you. God is God. He can be your best friend all the way to the end. And I pray you would just lift up, lift up your head, smile, and keep on going forward. Don't give up and don't stop because God is not going to give up on you. 
Don't give up on your life. Don't, don't let the devil destroy you before time. You find your life in Christ Jesus. Get in the Word. Find a scripture to read. You know, walk by faith and not by sight. Just trust and believe in Him, knowing He's with you. He will walk with you and talk with you and show you how and show you the way. He will direct your path if you believe. If you, you know how to work it, just try it. You know, you try everything else. I just try, try Jesus when you try everything else. Some else, probably something didn't work in your life. Try Jesus' way. Try Jesus' way of life. Because He is the life. He is the light. He don't want you to be in the dark. You know, he wants you to see, see his way in Jesus' name, my prayer. Now, we're going to sickness and every disease right now. I pray, Lord, to be with you and keep you and heal you and touch you right where you hurt. Cure that disease, whatever it is. Back pain, high back pain, low back pains and leg aches, cancer, heart attack, whatever. Hip, uh, uh, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, whatever disease. I mean, whatever is going on in your life. Sugar diabetes. You know, um, I rebuke all that in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, to heal you. Release that pain in Jesus' name. Medication free in Jesus' name. I pray you just trust in God. Do the will of God for your life. Get in the scripture for your life. You know, Lord, he's a healer, not a killer in Jesus' name. Trust in God and not the doctor, not the one that's practicing medicine. Trust in God that he don't have to practice medicine. He already knows what's wrong. He already knows how to heal you. But he wants you to speak them things, call them things that be not though they were. He wants you to speak. He wants you to talk. He wants you to open up your mouth. He wants you to say the thing whatever's wrong with you yourself. And you know what's wrong with you better than I do. But God knows. It all was better. What's was wrong with you all the way? And I pray no weapon form against you shall prosper in Jesus. And I pray you just trust in God. Let him be your source. Let him keep him first in your life. Let him, you know, just let him guide you and lead you. And let him show you how in the way. In whatever way. All of your whole life, your whole lifetime, whatever situation it is. It don't even matter what it is. God is God. He knows what he's doing at all times. God bless you. God keep you in Jesus' name. I pray no weapon form against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. You can do all things through Christ that strengthen you if you believe. And don't give up and don't stop distrusting God. Glory be to God. God bless you and your family in Jesus' name. I pray you tell the devil get behind you. Get up under your feet in Jesus' name. You must go for it and keep on going for it. Don't look back. Just keep on going for it because the blessing is up ahead. The blessing is ahead. The blessing is in front of you. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you and God keep you in Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Glory be to God. God is good. And I want to say I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for this day. I pray for each and every last one of you to have a blessed week, you know, and stay strong. You know, don't give up. Don't stop no matter what your destiny is or whatever you're trying to do in life. I pray you just keep God and get in the Word. Meditate day and night. You know, ask God to show you, give you your direction, give you your path, show you His way. It's not the world's way, but show you His way. He will do it. You know, He did. I mean, it might not happen overnight, but you just keep on holding on and trusting Him. He want to see how you're going to do. He want to see how long you're going to go. You know, He want to see if you're going to give up. He don't want you to give up. He wants to keep on going even in, the, even in the mix of trouble, even in the mix of, you know, problems or whatever it is, you know, don't give up on God because he's not going to give up on you. He knows what's going to happen before you even know. He want, he testing you. He want to know what you're going to do. Are you going to go all the way with him or are you going to stop and give up? You know, he don't want you to quit. He wants to keep on going. Praise God. He wants you to keep on going, you know, because he loves you. He cares for you. But anyway, God bless you and God keep you. I mean, my God is good. He's awesome. I know I serve awesome God. Well, if I'm in that building of the house of the Lord or right here where I am, I got to praise God every day. I got to be in the world every day. I got to do the will of God every day. No matter if you see me on YouTube or not, I'm still got to keep on keeping on keeping on because my God is with me. My God protects me. My God loves me. Praise God. I know he loves you too. Praise God. But God bless you and God keep you. Remember, God loves you. And so do I. Until next time, you take care and be blessed. Always. All the days of your life be blessed. Amen. See you later.